in the immortal words of the greatest man to ever grace YouTube. Hello tubes. Today's video is advanced new world leveling tips. These are things that you probably won't learn yourself organically until you get to the end. You're like, oh, I really should have done that. And I haven't really seen other videos covering a whole lot of these tips. You might see one 10 minute video covering one of them and I don't think you need that kind of time. I'm Actors XD. If you're new here, then welcome. If you're old here, then welcome back. Let's get stuck into it. These tips will get more advanced as we go along. So we'll start with the more beginner advanced tips. Uh, look, all right. I don't know what that means, but let's so be it. And then we'll move on to the more advanced ones. But make sure you watch them all because it's very important for my video watch time. Nah, it is. They're good. They're good. There's good tips in here. This is like a several in one tip. Uh, things that you want to make sure that you've always got checked off, in my opinion. Number one is to stay up to date with the main story. Um, doesn't necessarily mean go out of your way and travel all the way across the map just to do the one story mission quest, but don't let yourself get 20 levels ahead of it and then have to rush to get back up to it. You're going to want to have that uh, main story quest like mostly up to date as per your level. Number one, because it's awesome XP. Number two, at the beginning, you need to get your A off staff and sometimes it's prereqs for other quests that we're going to want to do um, but the number one reason is just really good XP we don't want to out level it um, and not be taking the full benefit of that experience the n second always do so this is uh, point 1b always have a second reason for going out into the world um, other than just one quest wherever possible so don't leave town with only like one faction mission, one town board, one side quest to do, run three quarters of the way across the map, do that and then come back. You want to always try and have at least two, preferably three reasons to be leaving town. So if you've got a main story quest that's telling you to go, you know, the northeast for 7,000 kilometers is going to take you 48 minutes to run there or 27,000 Azoth fast travel, then pick up, go look at all the town board quests, see if there's any out there that have explorers needed quests that are out in the similar area. Have a look for side quests to see if there's any on the way, around there, on the way back, that kind of thing and knock them all off, do a bit of a loop around um, just try and if you're running somewhere in the world try and have more than one reason for doing it point one c is always have multiple towns worth of town board missions on the go this is even more relevant now than it was at the start of the game because at the start of the game all the towns had heaps of town board missions but now as towns are getting more and more upgraded there's less and less missions to do so don't only have be looking at the windswood town board and do, only doing those quests or only looking at where you're doing actual story missions or quests uh, and only getting those town boards what you want to be doing is having every town that you're run through, pick up all of the town board quests that a decent experience and have those complete them as you go through never specifically travel back to that town just to hand in one quest but at least you've got it there sitting in your quest log and you can just if you when you have a reason to go back to that town it might be for crafting it might be to turn in another quest it might be good because you've got three or four uh, town boards ready to turn in then you're going to be able to turn in a whole heap it's giving you access to a much wider variety of town board missions rather than the simply three, six, nine, twelve. Twelve missions on each board. Maths. I'm getting better at that, I tell you what. That's the end of point one. Point two is a quick ranking of town board missions. I've done this in an earlier video, so I'll take, a, it's the same ranking. If you've watched it that already, my tips and tricks video generally, then you can probably skip this, but I'll go into a slightly different thing. I think the number one quests to always do, really, I can't think of any exception to not do these, are the armor and weaponsmithing crates. Uh, they one level your armor and weaponsmithing. <laughs> Whoa, who would have thought? They also, leveling your armor and weaponsmithing when that levels up that gives you leveling experience which is awesome plus they give you experience when you turn them in plus they give you territory standing like all town board missions do which when you level that up you get experience so it's like a how many for one it's just awesome uh, number two uh, cooking crates are an almost always do not always um but cooking is one of the professions that we're really going to want to get stuck into and we'll go into that uh later on not down there but that way no maybe that way whichever's forward for you then we'll get on into that uh, when we go forward. you want to sort of be careful about how much money you're spending at the trading post here to get the cooking crates done or the cooking recipes done N no one wants to go bankrupt on garlic that's just kind of awkward pots are a mostly do when I was leveling earlier on in the game, um, some of the higher tier pots, especially the, it was, it, well, there's, blah, 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 was either strong or powerful regeneration potions were like 80 gold each. I doubt that's the case now because there's going to be more supply. The other good thing about pots is that they're light in your inventory, inventory, inventory. They're light in your backpack, so you can just carry them around for ages. The probably one downside of the weapon and armor smithing crates linking back into the point one I was talking about, about having lots of town boards on the go, is that that stuff's heavy. The raw materials are a sometimes do. You are going to need to determine what your sort of cutoff or your threshold is for that. Uh, if you're going to be turning in 20 ironwood planks for 7,000 experience and it's going to cost you like 200 gold, not really worth it in my opinion. The explorer's needed missions, linking back in again to point one, you only want to be doing those when you've got another reason to be leaving town. So animal quests, moving on. I just sort of strung that whole sentence together. Animal quests, don't bother. 
you're going to try and like talk, if you're anything like me anyway, you're going to try and talk yourself into doing them. Like, oh, it's only one bear. And you're going to carry that quest around for 19 years, not ever find a bear, eventually find one. It's going to be the one quest that you've got to turn in at Monarch's Bluff, which is all the way across the world from wherever you're going to go back there again, because you've done all the other relevant ones. And eventually you're going to end up spending 400 days off to go turn in one bear quest for 300 experience. And it's not worth it. Listen to the bald man. Fishing quests. This one, I, I'm not that... Sh uh, why do I do that? I don't do that in my real world, in my real life. This is my real life. Fishing quests depends on your server. When I was uh, leveling in the early days of the game, uh, fish was like really expensive. And so you just wouldn't, wouldn't even look at it. Like a salmon was a lot of gold, like 20 or more gold. That's changing now because more people have time to be fishing. There's more fish on the auction house. You might decide that you want to do fishing. Um, so you've got to make your own decision there. Have a look at the prices on your uh, trading post on your realm server world um, and decide whether it's, it's economically viable, feasible. Um, it's a fungible decision for you to make. That's point number two. I said that was going to be short. That wasn't really that short, was it? Uh, point number three is dungeons. In my opinion, they are usually always worth doing at least once uh, when you have all of the quests for them. For Amaran Excavation, Depths and Dynasty, there are main story and side quests for each of those dungeons, as well as you shall hopefully be able to find faction missions for them. Um, and so if you go in there and you've got one of each of those, you'll go in, smash that out um, and get a heap of experience. There were times I was level 50 and I was, I think once or twice, I went back into Amor and Excavation with a group of other 50s because we all had like bones for a Barkamedes uh, and one or two faction missions. We just ran straight through the dungeon holding W. We were done in like five minutes and you just walk out and get like a free 10, 15, 20k experience. You know, it's just easy. It's good. Um, that The same thing can be said for Depth and I think Starstone is the... Le whatever the next one for more bones for Barkamedes. They obviously like that pun and they're just running with it again. Um, those are repeatable ones and... Uh, worth doing. It might be depths, actually. Uh, point number four, and this is the most important, is that you subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Nothing will help you speed up your leveling faster than subscribing. I'm playing the game, I guess. Um, no, nah, but uh, literally every single sub, like, means the world to me at the moment as I'm just trying to get this channel going. You wouldn't believe the little happy dance I do sitting at the chair every time because I spam refresh and see a new subscriber. At the moment, only 8% of the people who spend time watching my videos are subscribed. So uh, if you have watched this and you've got some entertainment or information value out of it, then it would like literally make my entire day, if not week, if you would consider hitting the subscribe button. If you're feeling especially generous, generous, if you're feeling, oh my God. If you're feeling especially generous, you could hit the like button too. And if you wind up doing it, then like really from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Point number five is to keep your gear updated. This is something I'm putting in. I don't know if everyone is going to be like me, but I sucked at going back and checking the auction house. Uh, I'm using these words, these phrases interchangeably. I'm just going to have to keep up. I'm sorry. It might sound obvious, but I wouldn't go longer than say five levels without going back to the auction house and looking for like gear that's a, now your relevant level. It's a stat upgrade, not just a not gear score level. It needs to be a stat upgrade for your relevant stats uh, that's under like 15, 20 gold a piece, especially as you get like above level 35 and especially for weapons. There are massive improvements to be had with getting new weapons. It's ridiculous how good sometimes um, a, a weapon five levels later can be. So don't, don't just leave it thinking, oh, I'll organically come across enough good stuff or, you know, I'll go to a dungeon and I'll get this drop that I'm going to get because I did that like three or four times in depth, never got the drop. Then I wound up being level 47 with a level 30 hatchet, I think, and I'm an idiot. Don't don't do that. Point number six sort of runs on from that. But if you're above, say, level 45, do not try and level new weapons, especially from the very beginning until you get to level 60. I have a whole video on this that I'll put a card somewhere on the screen for you to click if you want to watch more in depth. Uh, but basically, um, you get diminishing returns on mobs when you're much higher level than them and you kill them. You get diminishing returns both on experience and weapon mastery. Um, so if you're 10 levels higher than something, then you're getting both less XP and mastery when you kill it because it's a lot easier for you. Um, however, killing heaps of low level things is far and away the most efficient way to level your weapons. If you're like level 25 and you want to sort of organically level your weapons, then that's fine. Just pick them up and it'll take you, you know, kill stuff your level. It'll take you a bit longer, but you should be fine. Mobs don't start sort of really getting troublesome uh, until, you know, like level 45 or whatever. So you probably just be able to brute force your way through them depending on the weapon. Number seven, and this is where we're getting into the really good stuff. So like if your computer chair has a seatbelt, then buckle it up. It's weird if you do, but whatever. Crafting professions after like level 130 of the... Um, Crafting professions after like level 130-ish, that's not a scientific number, um, give huge amount of XP every time you level them up. It's like 1.5 to 2k every time you level up cooking, about level 120 to 130, and then you get more and more 
the higher you get in cooking. Similar for the other professions, cooking is just the cheapest, the quickest, the easiest, and the most useful, like ongoing to do, I would say. So you can buy the mats to make highest level meal, both energizing and regular meal for your level, cooking level, and just make bulk of them until you get to the next. The meals are really cheap to buy the mats for off the trading post. You can just smash it out and in like 15 minutes, you're gonna be close to max cooking skill and have picked up a huge amount of experience. Uh, what you need to know is that you're getting experience based on when your profession skill levels up. So if you get to 200 in cooking, don't go out and buy another heap of uh, ingredients thinking that it's when you cook the food. It's not, it's when you level the profession up. So you get to 200, that's done. You've put that aside on the shelf, come back and look at your recipe book later on for stuff that you actually need aside from XP. It could be useful to do this with more than cooking depending on how affluent you are. If you've got a heap of gold then it's worthwhile looking at um, your refining professions to smash them up. If you've got like a heap of iron or a heap of steel, you could look at buying star metal ore off the trading post. You know, on my server, it's like 0.13 per ore. You could buy a heap of that, chuck it through the smelter. You're going to get a lot of experience. It's going to be useful uh, going forward anyway, because as soon as you get to 60, you're going to want to start looking at getting your refining skills up to 200 so that you get your daily uh, crafting cooldown uh, and you can start cycling through that either for gold or for crafting mats for the sick armor. The thing to realize here is if you're level 25, don't rush out and do this. I strongly advise against waiting uh, until some sort of break even point. And it's going to depend on how many professions you're thinking about doing uh, that with. If it's only cooking, then I'd be thinking about sort of level 54, level 55, start thinking about doing uh, that for your free boost of experience because experience uh, earlier on is a lot easier to come by um, because quest XP does not ramp up at the same level that um, XP required to level does. And so it's sort of a linear slowdown of uh, leveling time. If you save this big boost, it's really handy. You'll power through those last levels. Uh, and then there's important stuff we want to get to around 56 to 58 to sort of finalize and be as efficient as possible uh, by the time we get to level 60. So that, that's an important thing to note. And that, that leads into my next point, which is point eight, according to my Google Docs document, which is at level 60. And when you have weapon mastery level 20 in whatever weapon, you can do a quest to get a epic uh, gear score 580 weapon. Now they're not all great. They're not all created equal. Uh, I've been told the life staff is worthwhile, worthless to get fire staff, not great. It can be okay for PVE. Ice gauntlet's pretty dodgy, although I got it. These are called legendary weapon quests. I know I just said that the weapons are epic, but that's the way it is. And they have heaps. You can only do the, the quest for the weapon itself at 60, but to start any of them or all of them, all the weapon quests, there's a heap of prereqs you need to do. I'll put them all up on the screen as I've been talking here. Um, and, you, and I'll put links to all the quests down below. There is also an awesome resource that was produced by a Reddit user whose name I'll add on the screen because I don't know off the top of my head and that's bad. Uh, I'll leave a link to their Google document and to the Reddit post or credit for um, figuring out this goes to that person. But there's a, there's a heap of quests that you want to knock out in Great Cleave, Shattered Mountains and Eden Grove and it's pointless getting to 60 and then spending 10 hours doing these prerequisite quests and all the XP is just totally worthless. If you're doing them more like 56, 57, 58, you're getting all the benefits of knocking out the prerequisite quests but then you move, you're also getting the benefits of getting the experience as well. So you're getting a double banger, a double whammy two for one. We're also thinking here about not wanting to ding 60 with these quests because the next thing we want to look at then moving on to doing is smashing out PvP faction missions so that we can, when we get to 60, we have a full set of uh, 520 gear score gear that we can just equip straight away. It's good PvP gear and it's okay PvE gear. Certainly good enough and it's probably better than whatever you're going to have from leveling. So we want to be finishing up the prereq legendary weapon prereq quests around 58, 59 and then moving to Reek Water in my opinion or if it's hotly contested then considering either Great Cleave or Shattered Mountains uh, and just spam running uh, faction missions for faction tokens primarily so that we can buy the gear and or otherwise for XP too. So we want to, again, be efficient with doing both of those things at once rather than just only getting faction tokens because we crowned wolves from 58 to 60 and w weren't efficient in how we did those things. I sort of ran, the point nine is about the faction token grind, but I just spoke a whole lot about it. So I'm not going to go back into it again, but I did do a video on the best way to grind faction tokens, even though I gave away the real you know, cliffhanger about where to do it. Uh, there's still useful information in the video and I'll leave a card to that here. Uh, last point uh, is, and, and the last point is, the main quest, as I said earlier, takes you to uh, the Dynasty Dungeon. The Dynasty Dungeon has a side quest from Ebonscale Reach. I think it has one prerequisite, and but that side quest rewards 36,500 experience. Uh, the main quest line, you don't have to kill the last boss, but the side quest you do, uh, it's worth trying to knock that, that dungeon out with the side quest, of course, uh, sometime between 56 and 58, uh, so that we've got time to do everything everything else. The last boss is kind of difficult in my experience. You might be a god at PvE. I mean, I'm a god at PvE. It just it happened to people that I was in a group with.
and you can smash that in. Thank you very much for making it through to the end of this video with me. Again, if you've got here, I really urge you to hit the like button and consider subscribing. Uh, not only will you give me joy, but you'll give yourself the benefit of getting all the new information and videos uh, as I put them out. YouTube will give them, recommend them to you more often. And if you'd like to be notified the very second I put them out, you can hit the bell icon. Thank you very much. I love you. And remember,